All right, guys, today we are looking at um, solving multi-step equations, still linear equations, and we're going to use the distributive property to get rid of any and all parentheses. So if you remember from the last lesson on solving two-step equations, all we were focused on was moving everything away from x. Now, if you look at the examples uh, on this page today, we have some parentheses. To get rid of parentheses, you have to use the distributive property, which just means you're going to multiply everything in the parentheses by what's out in front. So we're going to start off with example one. Uh, the directions are solve each equation for the indicated variable. So we're still solving for x. We're trying to get x by itself. I have to get rid of the parentheses. To do that, I'm going to distribute 3, which means I'm going to multiply 3 times x and 3 times negative 7. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21, and it still equals 14. Now I just have an equation uh, similar to our previous lesson. It's a two-step equation. I need to get x by itself by moving 3 and negative 21 over to the right side of the equal sign. I'm going to move negative 21 first because it's not attached to x. Remember, you want to move um, what's farthest away from x or what's not attached to it first. So to add, or sorry, to get negative 21 over to the right side of the equal sign, we're going to add 21 to both sides of the equation. When we do this, the 21's cancel. So on the left side, I have 3x equals 14 plus 21 is going to be 36. Then to get rid of the 3, I need to divide both sides by 3. These 3's cancel. On the left side, I have x. On the right side, I have three or 36 divided by 3, which is going to be 12. And that will be my answer. Now, if you look at example 2, I have 4 times x plus 1 equals 6 plus 4x. So same deal. I need to solve for x. Um, I can't do anything on this side um, because I have to focus on getting rid of these parentheses first. So to get rid of the parentheses, I'm going to distribute. So I have 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is positive 4. The right side didn't change, so I just bring it down. Now I can worry about moving pieces over. Remember that you want to get the variables on one side. So you want to move both x's either to the left or to the right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this 4x over to the right side. To do that, I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. When I do that, these 4x's will cancel. These 4x's will also cancel. So on the left side, I have 4 equals, and on the right side, I have 6. Now, 4 does not equal 6, so I'm going to cross out that equal sign, and my answer is going to be no solution. Because 4 does not equal 6. I'm going to box my answer. Okay, let's look at the next two examples. I have example 3, negative 11 equals 5 times x minus 3 plus 4 minus 5x. So we kind of have a lot going on on the right side. It's okay. Just focus on get, getting rid of the parentheses first. Remember, to get rid of the parentheses, we distribute. So I'm going to distribute the 5 to the x and to the negative 3. On the left side, the negative 11 is still there. So I have negative 11 equals 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. I still have to bring this down. This still has to come along for the ride. So I have a positive 4 and a negative 5x. Now what we can do, um, if you look at the right side, I have like terms. <laughs> so I have 5x and negative 5x. Those are like terms. And then I also have negative 15 and positive 4. Those are like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and combine everything. When I combine, 
the left side doesn't change, I still have negative 11. 5x minus 5x is going to be 0, so these are actually going to cross each other out. Negative 15 plus 4. Watch out for the negatives. Uh, 15 is obviously a bigger number than 4, so I know that my number is going to be negative since 15 is larger. So I have negative 15 minus 4 is 11, so negative 11. Now if you look, it says negative 11 equals negative 11. Since these numbers match, that means both sides are equal. That means no matter what we plug in for x, the left side will equal the right side every single time. That means we have an infinite number of solutions. So what that means is, is I could plug 5 in here and 5 in here, and I would still end up with negative 11 because every time you go through this process, these 5x's, the positive and the negative, are going to cancel out, and it's always going to leave you with negative 15 over 4, which will always get you negative 11, and that's always going to equal the left side. So I could plug in 1, 2, 3, uh, negative 50, doesn't matter. Every time it's going to cancel itself out, and I'm going to have negative 11 is negative 11. Therefore, no, uh, infinite solutions. Example 4. Um, I have two sets of parentheses, so I'm going to have to distribute twice. On the left-hand side, I have 3 times x and 3 times 1. So 3x plus 3. On the right side, I have 4 times x minus 1. So 4 times x, 4 times negative 1. 4x minus 4, and the equal sign in between. Now what I'm going to do is move... Uh, my x is to one side. I'm going to move 3x. Um, to move 3x, since it's positive, I would have to subtract it. The reason I chose to move 3x was because if I moved 4x and I had to subtract 4 from 3, that would give me a negative number. And I don't really like to deal with negative numbers, so I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible for myself. So these 3x's are going to cancel out. On the left-hand side, I have 3. Uh, on the right-hand side, 4x minus 3x is just 1x, and I still have this negative 4 that has to be brought down. So I have x minus 4. x is still not by itself, so we're not done. I need to move the 4 over by adding it to both sides. These will cancel. 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7 equals x. And that will do it for solving multi-step equations using the distributive property to get rid of parentheses. Have a great day, guys.